Hi, uh, this is Jason, and this is my daily vlog called Living with CMT. I hope you enjoy. Good afternoon, folks. It's uh, Thursday afternoon. We're just uh, chilling, and we're about to have a coffee. But for a change, we've actually come down Queen Lee's. Um, just to go out for a different, something a bit different. We picked up a really good bargain, actually. It's, uh, I can't believe it. You know the uh, big fleece blankets that you can buy with emojis on? They're usually about eight quid. Uh, Aldi is selling them up at one ninety nine. so if you get a chance, get down there. They're one and a half metres by a metre, so they're a fair size, I'll tell you. And there's two different uh, designs, so I have a ball couple of them today. It's a good idea just to wrap around your legs, you know, when you're watching telly. Um, the album is CMT as well, because I can't feel my legs getting cold until they're actually ice cold. Wrapping a fleece blanket around them, spot on mate, perfect, does the job. And that way then you don't get too hot, and if you do get hot, you can just unwrap it, you know. I'd recommend it anyway. Yeah, just about to have a coffee, and then uh, have a little bit more of a walk around Cleveland, and then head off home. I'm not doing a lot else today, it's one of them days, and uh, I'll do some more filming later. Bye for now. Well, I haven't been able to take it yet, Deb, come on. Proper smile. No, without your mug in your face. Wait a minute. Good evening, folks. It's uh, Thursday night. As you can see from the early videos, we had a few hours out today. I ended up going to Cleveland's, which we haven't been for quite some time. Uh, the dog was happy because it's the only place we can get a pig's ears from, so she's over the moon. Now, you remember me telling you on the video about the fleece blankets that we managed to pick up for one ninety nine. These are them fleece blankets. They are literally massive. They are a metre by a metre and a half, and they retail at £8. I know because I've seen them everywhere I go, they are £8. And uh, B, uh, not B &M, Aldi are doing them for one ninety nine. So if you get a chance to get to your local Aldi, hopefully they might have some in for you. I've managed to pick up two, to be honest. Uh, one is from where I'm sitting um, here. I can wrap it around my legs. Like I pointed out in the other video, they are really, really good for keeping your legs and the top of your legs warm. Because we're coming up to that time of the year where it's going to get cold. You know, it's going to get cold. We know that very quickly. Um, it's not been a bad day today, actually. It's been very, very warm. Surprised me. Um, I went out in my uh, calipers because I'm wearing my calipers every time now. I've got no choice. And I didn't, I didn't cope too badly. Uh, I think they're going to get a lot worse in the winter. Because obviously when my legs get tired and I feel the cold a lot more in the winter. So my legs will get more pain and, and obviously... The calipers are heavy, so I'll suffer a bit, but hey-ho. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that was the bargain of the day, really. Uh, I also picked up another biography. You know I'm mad on my biographies. Uh, Deb spotted this for me, uh, which is back to front, but basically it is the biography of Ernie Wise. Uh, now, I'm a mad fan on biographies of anybody you can think of. I've got Ronnie Barkers, I've got David Jasons, I've got the two Ronnies, I've got Eric Morecambe's, I've got Ernie Wise, I've got Spike Milligan. You know, I've got so many biographies. I've even got football biographies. I've got Gerard. I've got Jamie Carragher. I've got um, Johan Cruyff. I had that bought for me last year. Uh, so I've got tons and tons to read. And uh, I'm never, you know, I never get fed up of reading biographies. It gives you a really, really good insight into the person. I suppose that's why I'm writing my own in a way. So that people can get to see how I grew up, what I did, the jobs I've had, which not for a long time. The people I've known, the situations I've faced, and how I've got to how I am today. So, yeah, that's um, that's why I read biographies, really. It gives you... Because, uh, obviously, when you see actors or singers or sportsmen, you only see what you see on screen. You don't know what they're like in real life. You don't know what they've gone through in real life or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, it's a really, really good way of doing that. I saw a, a news uh, story earlier that's literally, literally taking my breath away. I cannot believe it. You know, I was going on the other day about women's rights and how everything's being changed so that women are not offended, etc., etc. I saw the most ridiculous thing today. I've been having Kleenex tissues for years, and I usually have the big box of the man-sized tissues. And they've said now, after 60 years... They are having to change the word man size on the tissues because women have complained that it's sexist. I have never heard nothing so absolutely ridiculous in my life. 
So does that mean that everything with the weird man in or woman in has got to be changed? Because if so, all these magazines that are out for women, Women's Own, Woman's Weekly, they've surely got to be changed. Because otherwise, it's sexist towards women, isn't it? Surely. Men aren't getting a say. They've got to be called People's Weekly. People's Own, surely. Because if, it, if it's sexist for one, it can't have it both, you've got to have it both ways. And as somebody pointed out, Mother Care. Why Mother? Why not Father Care? So is the, are they going to have to change the rebranding to Parent Care? Come on, people. I mean, come on, get a bit of sense. We're going a bit stupid now. You women, I mean, sorry, but, but some of the women, don't get me wrong, some of the women are saying it's bloody ridiculous as well. It's only a certain amount who are complaining and making it so that all these companies that have been doing stuff for years that isn't sexist at all. I'm sorry, man-sized tissues have been man-sized tissues for 60 years. It's only in this generation now they've suddenly got to be changed to, I don't know what they're going to call them. What are they just going to call them? Extra large tissues. Okay, fair enough. They will always be known as Kleenex man-sized tissues. That's what they've always been known as, you know. Maybe, I don't know, I, I'm just getting really, really fed up of it. I'm getting really, really sick to the back teeth of it. And I know a lot of people that I know are getting sick to the back teeth of it as well. Because it's going too far. It is really, really going too far. I can understand, like I said before, I can understand women's rights, right? Definitely. I've just done a jigsaw, for God's sake, of a hundred years of them. So I'm, I support women's rights and women's votes and all that sort of stuff. But come on, you're taking it too far. You do not want any association with the word man. How pathetic are you? Really, how pathetic are you? I've never heard a man complain that mother care is called mother care. I've never heard a man complain that a magazine has come out for women. You know, what are they going to do now? Are they going to have to rebrand just for men? The, uh, you know, the dye for your hair. Are they going to have to re rebrand that now? It can't be called just for men now, can it? Just for men and women and anybody. Bit much fit on the box, isn't it? Just for everyone. I mean, I buy a lot of toiletry products that are for men. Nivea for men. They're called Nivea for men. It is a brand, it's a range called Nivea for men. Are they going to have to get rid of all that as well? Is it going to be Nivea for everyone? That's just stupid. I'm sorry, but, oh, man, I just don't get this world. I don't get the world. I think we're getting too fussy and too picky. And I can see soon there'll be no definition of a sex of any kind. There won't be men, women. We won't be anything. We will just be people. That's it. And that's only if that gets passed as well. Sorry, I feel really, really strongly about this subject, and I don't understand it at all. I don't understand why things have to be changed if they are working and nothing is wrong with them. Because they're not causing offence. They aren't. They're not causing offence. If you want to be offended these days, mate, you will be offended. You will find something to be offended at. Even if there's nothing to offend you, you will go out of your way to find something which can make you stand up and say, I'm offended, I'm standing up for my rights. Sorry, but what a load of, I won't swear, rubbish. I wrote a nice simple poem today, um, it's just something that came into my head, and it's just called Smile. It's called Smile, like I say. You made me smile today, told me that you loved me, that you needed me, you would always want me, I was the man for you, my eyes were a perfect blue, my smile was what made you smile, my laugh was addictive, my heart was immense and never ending, my love was eternal. Hold my hand as we walked. You listened to me when I talked. You kissed me and held me close. You looked into my eyes and whispered, I love you. You made me smile today. The last thing I am going to say today is, I read earlier that police say that homicide rates in uh, England and Wales are the highest they've been for a very, very long time. Now, this didn't surprise me. This didn't surprise me in the slightest because we are such an angry people. We are an angry world. We are an angry nation. We find it easier to be angry at somebody and to attack them than we do to rationalise anything. Now, with me being how I am, I've never really been one for violence. I've never been able to uh, really stand up for myself in that respect. Um, I've had a few fights when I was a child, you know what I mean? But I've never been one of these who's um, gone up and thumped somebody for nothing. I've never been one of these who's resorted to violence for the sake of violence. Uh, one, I haven't got it in me. I don't believe in violence in that respect. 
Um, I believe in trying to sort things out, uh, like I don't believe in grudges either. Um, so I don't understand this mentality of ours as if, if we fall out with somebody, just go straight for them. Don't try and talk. Don't try and see if there's any ground that you can reach, any mutual ground. Don't see if there's anything you can do to cut, you know, to stop it from turning into a fight. Just wade in there. And when I was a child, see, when I was a child, I mean, I'm going back years, obviously. When I was at school, if we had a fight, we had a fight with fists. I'm punching and kicking. That was it, right? Nothing else. Nothing else. Nowadays, you hear about fights in schools. If he gets out of hand, one of the children will pull a knife and stab one of the others. So instead of getting a smack round the roll off your mum and dad for fighting in the school, you are being charged with either GBH or attempted murder or even murder if it goes that far. So what what is with that? What What's with that? I don't understand. Because you're not telling me that um, our brains have grown to a certain proportion in the last 30 years of growing up that suddenly now our children are mega violent and want to stab and shoot everybody. I don't believe that for a minute. I don't believe it's all down to the TV we watch and the games we play. I don't think it helps if we're exposed to it at an early age. Bear in mind I was brought up on Trumpton, Chigley, Camberwick Green and Mr Ben, so I don't think there was that much violence in them at all. There was no swearing or nothing like that. Closest I got to violence was Battle of the Planets, I think. But nowadays, they've got things like the Netflix and Amazon Prime and all this kind of thing. And if the parents don't keep an eye on them, you've got kids of eight, nine years old watching 18's films. You know, they're sitting there watching your Deadpools and all this thing and think it's funny. And uh, I mean, I know of children who, when they're five and six years old, were playing Call of Duties and stuff like that. And they were thinking it was really funny to use a sniper rifle and shoot somebody in the head. You know, and this is a five and six year old. When I was a five and six year old, I was playing with little green soldiers. That's as violent as it got. You would literally hold two soldiers away from each other, pretend to shoot them and drop one on the floor. That was it. That was it. There was none of that stuff. My computer games are things like Horry Scoe's Skeen and Checkered Flag. You know, there was none of this violence and stuff that we've got now. But I'm not saying that's to, I'm not saying that is solely to blame because it's easy to blame it on you know TV media and all that. You've got to have a brain in your head first to actually you know say to yourself that's real. Uh, sorry, this is reality. That isn't, and you've got to separate the two. If you don't separate the two, then that's down to you. That's not down to the TV. But yeah, that's what I want to talk about today. I just don't I don't understand it. So when they say that you know the, the uh, homicide figures are up, I'm not totally surprised. I hear about it every single day. If you can actually go through the, the, the news every day and not see a murder, you're reading different news than me. You really are. Like I said before, we've gone too far and there's no way back. It's just going to get worse and worse. Bye for now. If you're enjoying the videos I'm doing and you want to see more, uh, you can subscribe by clicking the link there. And if you want to see my exciting day from yesterday, you can click up there. Thank you again for taking the time to watch my videos. Bye for now.